you see? But when the object gets over here, you have m, m, v, and then you have r this way, and theta. Now, r and theta are continually changing. Over here, the r is big, the theta is small. Over here, r is small, theta is big. And when that object comes over here, <clears throat> this is the r, this is the v, and then this, the theta is 90. So r and uh, theta are continually changing. However, r sine of theta is equal to what? r sine of theta, sine of theta, that's this component of the r, which we can write as h. Okay, so the angular momentum of an object, even though the object is not rotating, even if it's coming straight and hits another object, it's equal to its mass times its velocity times the distance from the center of mass of the other object. Okay, MVH. So, so the H is the vertical distance here. Okay, now going back to our problem. So this guy hits this guy. What is its initial angular momentum? Now here's where another tricky thing comes, okay? Which H am I gonna use? This H or this H? The H from between uh, where it's going to stick and where the object is going to rotate. Okay? So which H should I do? This or this? Versus this or this? I've thought about this quite a while, you know. It's an interesting situation. It ends up being that it's this H that matters. Okay? Because what, what you're doing is where you're saying the angular momentum initial of the system about the point around which it's going to rotate. The system is going to rotate. Okay. Now since this gets stuck to that, it moves the center of mass up a little bit and it's going to rotate about that new center of mass. Right? So the H that matters is the H between where it's going to rotate and where it came in. So the H that we're going to use is 0.9 minus 0.15, which is uh, 0.75, right? So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to say MV uh, times uh, H, we'll call that H prime, is equal to L final total, is going to be the final moment of inertia of the system. times omega final. So we have here MVH prime. So we have 2 times 3 times H prime, which is 0.9 minus uh, 0 0.15 is equal to I final total. What is the more, uh, angular momentum? What is the uh, moment of inertia of the system after the collision? Well, what is the moment of inertia of this system here about that point? Oh, there's a lot of stuff in this problem, you see? So now we're going to have to use what we know about moment of inertia. The moment of inertia of a uniform rod is 1 12th ml squared, but we have to shift that to that point. You see? So we have to use the parallel axis theorem. Okay? So I, I, I final total is uh, 1 12th, right, times uh, its mass, which is uh, 10 kilogram, times uh, L, the, its length is 4 meters squared, plus use the parallel axis theorem to shift it, because the ruler is going to rotate around the new center of mass, so shift it by 10 times 0.15 squared. So
So 112 times 10 times 4 squared plus 10 times 0.15 squared. So now this is the moment of inertia of the ruler about the new center of mass because we took the old center of mass and we shifted it by 0.15. Then we add to that the moment of inertia of the object which is stuck on the ruler about the new center of mass. Okay? So that will be 2 times this distance squared. Okay? Which is what? Uh, 0.75 we said, right? So 2 times 0.75 squared. There's a lot of stuff that you got to do to analyze that, you know. Go over it and over it in your mind. 2 times 0.75 squared times omega final. All of this, what are we doing it for? So we can find the final rotational speed of the rod object system. Okay? Final rotational speed. So you do all this, you do all that. You know what? Let's first calculate the moment of inertia here separately because we're going to need this later on. So uh, this one comes out to be 16 times 10, 160 divided by 12 plus 10 times 0.15 squared plus 2 times 0.75 squared. So the total moment of inertia of the system is coming out 14.683. And then this part is coming out 6 times 0.75, 4.5. So now the omega final is uh, 4.5 uh, divided by 14. 0 0.683, 0 0.31 rads per second. So the system is going to rotate at 0 0.31 rads per second. Now, if we do the kinetic energy of the system, the initial kinetic energy of the incoming object should be greater than the total kinetic energy after the collision, right? Because this is an inelastic collision. So the kinetic energy should be lost. The initial kinetic energy is the incoming uh, object, which was half times its mass times its, uh, its velocity squared. So the initial kinetic energy of the system, half, two times three squared. The other, the ruler didn't have any velocity initially. So that one is nine joules, right? Okay. The final kinetic energy of the system is half times the total mass of this. Remember, it has two kinds of kinetic energy, translational, plus rotational. This isn't like the other problem where we let the ruler uh, pivot it and then let it go and then it rotates. That one has only rotational kinetic energy, right? This has two, both. So half times mass total times V center of mass prime squared plus half times I total times omega final squared. So we got to add up the two kinetic energy of the system. So mass total is uh, 2 plus uh, 10, right? That's 12 times the center of mass prime squared. So that's uh, 0.5 squared plus half times I total. And then I wrote I total down over there uh, as 14.683. And then times omega final, which was 0.31 squared. 